everybody. Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer. And today I'd like to invite you into the madness of my mind. We're going to be doing a design and process show and an AMA. And basically what this is going to be is I'm going to take you through the craziness that's me, how I originate my ideas, how I get them from here to paper to eventually a canvas. And I'm going to walk you through the steps, talk about the materials, talk about the whys, answer your questions, and also give you some actual real strategies so that you can do this for yourself. Because that's the whole point of this. If you're brand new here, this is actually a series uh, called The Big Art Quest. 2017 is called About Face. And we're talking about like portraiture and caricature and all those ways that we do this. Mm -hmm. And we meet weekly and do this. Just in case you just wandered in from somewhere and you're like, why are you doing it? This is really actually going to be really cool because this is about taking your imagination and making it happen somewhere where you make something from it. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. And it's going to be a real relaxed pace. I really, really want you guys to queue up your questions. Hopefully they're art-related because those are the ones I'm answering today. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just talk about how, what, when, where, why in the creative process because I think that's really mysterious. I think, imagine that I've just opened the door to my studio and invited you in, and we're just going to talk about how we art. Hmm. And why we are. We've done a little bit where you guys gave me crazy suggestions and I tried to make that a whole. But this is sort of me working out my own head. I'm going to start out today taking away my reference sheet. These are important things to have. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go through a sketchbook that I currently have going. Currently? Yeah. And actually is relevant to projects you'll be doing in the future and talk to you about why I did that. And then I'm going to take you through a whole design that I'm just going to just originate here. Yes. All right. How you doing? Good. How are we doing? How's the crew doing? Very, very good. They're very excited. And Elizabeth wanted to say she very much likes your necklace. Oh, thank you. She's, she's I'm feeling very this is a Betsy and this is an Amber. The Amber actually ties into my inspiration for today. So, um, so that'll be a little secret, but I'll show you guys what I'm using as reference. And of course, if you want to do exactly what I do today, we will give you a traceable. We will give you the reference after the show. That'll be there's a if you go into the description below. Right after the show, we'll update with everything we used, anything you guys are excited about. Mm. We'll make it useful to you. But you really just go by the TS page on our website. That information is always collected there. I'm going to sippy sippy my coffee. You guys have your drawing pencils, your lined paper, your good paper, your tracing paper, all the stuff that we have for our big art quest today. Oh, yeah. Tracy's excited. She's like, she loves that you're inviting us into the madness. She thinks it's because you just crack her up. She's like, this yeah. is awesome. Yeah, John keeps talking about like he's going to take you into like my school sketchbooks and all this oh, stuff. Yeah. Right now, today, we're just going to yes. go through. So I had you guys get tracing paper. And the reason I do that is because I use it like crazy. It's inexpensive and it allows me to do a thing called iterate. John it always likes to say that. He's like, are you going to iterate on that? Which is just <laughs> saying that I'm going to explore an idea and repeat it and repeat it and refine it and repeat it and refine it. This is a much less annoying way of saying, are you going to do that again? Uh-huh. Yeah, you, it's, you it's the one that doesn't get him killed. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get to paint that one more time, right? <laughs> so this was a this was a piece I was working on for fall. Um, I kind of wanted to do something in the about face, back to the belief face that was a wild woman, right? And I wanted her to feel like the spirit of the season and all of that. So when I had gone into here, you know, have a wonderful little sense of sketching of some sunflowers I was thinking of putting here. And I created this really interesting flow and shock of hair and made some little design ideas about some little leaves that might be going up. You can see I did some different sizes. Did a little shading, just, just a little resolving. And from this, right, I will take this to ink and turn it into a traceable. And I will either do a color study if I am not completely sure where I'm going or I don't have a really locked in resolution. Or I'll take it right to the canvas and just paint that sucker out. And then you guys get to paint it on the show. Let me show you some more. Um, this is coming up. You guys know we have the 13 days of Halloween. Oh, yeah. So this is our Felba. And I really wanted, I am very into poppies. <laughs> and I really love this particular character, especially from the Wicked musical and the mm -hmm. book. And so I really wanted to do something inspired from that. I made a point. I really like the idea of her braid, of her hair flowing back, and the gesture of her head. And you can still see so all of the different little thought lines that I had going on here. Now, you, you want to talk about you know, our, our, our position on tracing here. Yeah. It's not Look. cheating. 
<laughs> it is a tool for artists, right? I, I, I have not uh, recently won the lottery. I don't know if you have. I have not. Mm. If you have, congratulations. That's awesome. That's a, yeah. <laughs> that's a really cool thing. Don't tell anyone, Guild and Turning. But I haven't. So, <laughs> you know, I can't just pull out a $30, you know, sheet of arches, 300 pound cold press paper and just work it out on that. I, I need to get some ideas out in, inexpensively and work it out. And then I transfer those ideas that are resolved onto media. And that is one of the first places that I save money as an artist. Mm hmm is I don't try to work out my idea in the wrong place. And I also don't do it on lined paper, right? From my uh, three rule, my daughter loves to draw on lined paper and I'm just so trying to get her to stop doing that. Because if you work in your tracing paper in your sketchbook, then if you have an image, you, have you ever had that experience where you just finally got something, boom, and you're like, and it's on the wrong media and mm. you can't get it again? Mm -hmm. mm. It's your friend. Because when it's here, you have it forever. Once I ink this sucker, you know. So this particular Halloween, we were talking about the ladies of Halloween, and I wanted to create different character experiences for each of them. Yeah. So can you see this here? This is our Elvira experience. Yeah. So I looked at a bunch of old footage of Elvira, and um, not the movie, but the footage where she used to review <laughs> bad oh, movies. Oh, yeah. And just like, you know, who was she? What was the character about? And so I included a film strip, right? Because I'm telling a story about who she is. Mm -hmm. She was a very saucy chick. Yep. Right? She's a little bit sassy. A lot of double, you know, about a, you know, double entendres. A lot of double entendres. Um, you guys almost got a whole different picture, but then I was like, oh, it wasn't really family friendly, so I rethought it. <laughs> <laughs> but notice the gesture to her body yeah. conveys that. And then I've got the popcorn coming in, and it crosses over the sheathing of her hair that comes out. And there's a lot I can erase here, I can rethink, but once I get this somewhat resolved, then I can start inking and refining, and this can easily become a finished piece. And you, yeah, you'd revise that a lot, too, on that yeah, one. Yeah, you know, I revise a lot. I just sit over there and mess around. This is my uh, Morticia. Mm-hmm. All right. Everyone's already asking, are you going to have traceables for all of these? Every one of these gets turned into a traceable. This is also the basis by which our traceables first start. Right. So... <laughs> You guys really work with what I work with. So I have this here. This is this is Morticia, and I'm really excited about her. And for me, this character was always about love, mm -hmm. right? At her core, she is led by heart. And so I put this little heart symbol here, and I got very whimsical with her dress because her dress used to have these weird little tendrils coming out that really were attractive to me. This particular pose is iconically hers. Yeah. But... Again, notice that I curve the figure to add a little more interest into it, mm -hmm. and then we kind of flew the ha kind of flowed the hair down, and it just let me even right down to the fingers. There's a little story here, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. You get a sense of what she's on about, and then sometimes I get I start thinking about a thing like this is one where I was thinking about something, and then was like I don't like it, and didn't take it any further. It was just not you were not. Mm. Not loving it. I just wasn't feeling it. It felt stagnant. It didn't feel interesting or engaging. It didn't have any flow to it. It was just, I'm a face in the middle of the page. And I was like, ah, it's It so does look boring. very portraity. Huh? It does look very like portraity. It was just, yeah, it was very just stuffy. too. And then I was playing with character. Like, how can we talk about a character without saying who the character is? So this was Lily Munster, and I'm going to work through her Chanel-inspired gown, and we're going to do the roushing and really pay attention to her necklace and the lacing. Mm -hmm. And it should be a lot of fun and also really easy. So, you know, it's those are some of the things that I do when I'm trying to do what I do. Some of your designs. Yeah. i got to put my thing over here. I'm a little crowded over here today because i got all my, my goodies <laughs> out. Your, your notes. Well, so... You know, in my thing, I have some references. You see some feathers out. I have a bunch of media. Look, let's go my palette. Look at all the toys I have just ready. I have wow. all these toys. You can't even see all the... There's a bunch of toys that are off camera here, right? So in life, one tends to get a little hoardy with art supplies. And I certainly am no exception. So I have all these little tools so I can... Like, I like to ink my tracing paper in with these little Tombows. Because they come in a nice nib... And a brush pen. Gives me a lot of control. Nice ink. I've got my little watercolor hoard here. Just in case I want to do something. 
I have my, I really like some of the colors from the Viviva color sheets. Mm -hmm. So this you should make with any of your watercolors, this is a little color cheat sheet. <laughs> Especially in something like this where you're not, I mean, the peacock blue on this versus what it is on the paper, it's really different. So the Viridian, see how different those are? Well, you're just a little bit off camera there. So okay. I'm sorry. Um, okay. All right, here we go. Yeah, perfect. So this is a perfect example. I love this peacock blue, but he, and it's fun here, right? It's gorgeous. It's metallic. By the way, these really pick up on your hand. So these are very different colors. And so by having this little color sheet that I can be like, oh, I know what the heck I was talking about or why I even picked that. Right. And then I have some, I always think it's nice to have anything that you grab when you're doing a, a kind of anything exploratory. You know, look at the, these are Artezas. I got some of these. I haven't even used these metallic markers. And these are some of the watercolor pencils. And so it's like, well, I can pull this into what I'm doing. I've got my watercolor sheet here. I've got some gouache in case I need to do opaque layering. I've got, I, this is the whole bind gouache. I've got a little golden fluid. I have a hoard. I call it a hoard. It's a little hoard of stuff. Yeah. And then I have my very important, I'm standing here when I'm watercoloring my Crondosh palette, which I love this thing. Oh, yeah. You use that thing all the time. I love this thing. And a mister. And then my brushes today probably will mostly predominantly be my black velvets. I have a travel brush of this that you guys have seen before I love. Mm -hmm. And I have some more, uh, some other little watercolor brushes. Here's the thing. The best watercolor brush is a jacked up acrylic brush. Okay. And a great acrylic brush is kind of a jacked up watercolor brush. These are soft. Now, in this particular case, these are uh, synthetic. You, you broke my brain there. What did you say there again? <laughs> <laughs> I broke your brain? With, with All right. With this is the bomb diggity, bomb diggity acrylic brush would suck for watercolor. Oh, because it's too stiff. It's too stiff. It doesn't pull up enough water. I mean, crunch, crunch, crunch. Right, right, right. It's right, just right. too okay. much, but it's great for heavy right. body. I understand that. This is so wishy-washy. It'd be like, ah, uh, ah, uh, it wouldn't even get it so. Too soft for for, for the right tool for okay. the right job. That makes sense. Right. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to start working some stuff out. And today, as I told you, I am inspired by Amber. Mm. I am actually very inspired by Amber today and colors. And actually, so I'm going to, I'm going to think of, get the nice fold on this. This is fighting me. Usually these are broken in for me. Oh, tomorrow's painting <laughs> or Saturday's painting. Sorry. <laughs> forgot that was even up there. You guys want to see it? Sure. There we go. Peaky peaky. Oh, focus. There you focus. go. There you go. Isn't that lovely? It is. Designed the same way as everything I'm about to show you here. <laughs> so I like to get pictures that inspire me, photographs from online and things, you know, and think about like, I think I put them, where did I put them in one of my sketchbooks? There it is. Yeah. Good figure out. There, there. So I have some. I'm just looking for my pictures that inspired me and I've lost them. So I have no inspiration. So you can get inspiration from different things, right? You could see a designer released a new dress. You could see a special table setting. I mean, it's, it's pretty, it seems that the muse of creativity can be pretty capricious, <laughs> right? And so we've been talking about a lot of things lately. So I've been collecting images, uh, great places responsible resources for your inspiration are places like Pixabay or Paint My Photo. Like, you know, if you're going to be on Pinterest and you make a Pinterest inspiration board, realize that inspiration in that case means like it needs to jump you to a whole nother idea. Mm -hmm. It does not mean you just repaint what that person did. So That would not be inspiration. That would be copying. <laughs> All right. So I've got a little quail here. Is that what you're working on today? I, it's an inspiration thing. And I have... I, I knew I'm really into poppies, so I've got a couple poppy references. And that's going to be inspiration, too. And I got this cool little amber. For some inspiration. And I got this little bee. <laughs> now, it's a tra and, and, and you may use these. You may trace some of these pieces. No. No, you're just using them for inspiration I just here. need, you know what? You cannot draw what you don't see. Mm. You either have to have it really held in your mind's eye, or you need a reference photo. Now, i got a couple questions here, if you're mm -hmm. up for taking a little sip. Uh, and these feathers are references for me, too. Oh, those are pretty. Yeah. So if you don't mind, I'm going to... Um, actually, today is the question day, so please ask them. Okay. 
So we're gonna we're gonna we have cinnamon for as long as she until she runs out of coffee. Yeah, so which really I need a reheat after oh, question. Reheat, we'll reheat you. So, so I'll, I'll give you a couple questions here. First of all, and and uh, Allison, mm-hmm. there, I'm gonna, there's several tracing questions all here together. So we'll get okay, these out. Okay, happy to answer all. Of them. When using tracing paper, what type of pencil do you use? Hard or soft? Two B to H P. You know, sorry if this is asked before, but she, oh, she didn't, no, happy to answer yeah. all these. Um, the uh, do you think uh, uh, Annie would like to know if you think tracing is good and and, and why? Why mm-hmm. you know? Uh, Le- and then Lisa was also asking what inspires you and Moonshadow Girl also saying like how did you find your painting style? So I'll leave you with that while I go reheat your coffee. Okay. So I'm going to answer how you found your painting style because that actually opens up an interesting can of worms to the end. But you're going to love the worms. John's like, oh no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, worms all right the first one it you know um how what materials do i use for tracing so i really like my um 2b and 4b and hb jumbo pencils this is i am into these pencils these are faber castells 9000 jumbos and they come in different hardness i just dig them but you've got to get a weird pencil sharpener for them so i just got faber's little pencil sharpener because I have a bunch of these around and I just dig these and they come to a pretty soft lead. I tend to sketch in softer leads and then uh, my rubbing, the graphite rubbing on the back will generally be like at least a 2B, but I trace over it with a hard lead. Um, basically the harder the lead, the lighter the graphite will be on it. So, and, and it, when it's a nice soft mushy, mushy lead, then the graphite's darker and richer and blends easier. So, and tracing paper, believe it or not, you can do quite a lot of sketching and thinking on tracing paper. Um, Is tracing okay? Absolutely. It saves your pocketbook. You don't want to be on your, you want to do beautiful, you want to use beautiful art materials, but you don't want to be experimenting on them. When, by the time you take your artwork to your good materials, you want to be, what's she doing? Oh, you want to be sure that you have um, really resolved your ideas so that you don't make a mistake like one that, you know, you're really unhappy with on your good materials. And how did I get my style? So I worked a long, long time. And I worked in a, uh, in a very, uh, you know, productive set. But I did come to this place where I was like, man, I need more style. I need more, more individuality. I felt like my stuff was really commercial. And what I did was a daily painting. Um, it was before I was ever on YouTube. I've talked about it before on the show. Um, huh? you may have bumped John's back here. I talked about it before on the show. And what I'm going to say about this is, is that in it's, it is the most transformative journey that you can take. Right. Um, I can't think of anything that I've ever done along my art path that broke me down, completely cracked me and built me back up again. And I mean, and I really did it like, Oh, okay. Yeah, it's fine. I really, like, John will tell you, it was a real journey. It was a real time in our lives. Because, like, I, I was there sick. I was there crying. I was there happy. Whatever was going on. There's some sad paintings that came out of that. There's some bad paintings that came out of that. There's some, there's a whole thing. And so um, I think that in that process of doing that every day, what happened was, is that all my skills fell away, right? Because at some point you kind of can rely on your skills. And, and my voice started to come through. And so that's how it happened for me. It's like one day I just, it, 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 I started to hear myself. I think in life we get so many people telling us who we are and what we should be and who we should be and what we should do and what we should wear and what we should like and you should be this and you should be that and your art should look like this and this is what sells. And seriously, an agent who'd be like, I can't, I can't sell any orange. You're not going to put any orange in the painting. Yeah. Right. yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> like, um, they're 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 summer European, right? My she would do that to my mom too. This is, I'm sure my mom has talked about her. She was definitely a, she was an experience, wasn't she? Yeah. So it's just when you create a lot, 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 a lot. You get out of your own way. I told you it's worms. Worms. Now, there's more tracing worms. questions while you're while you're. Yeah, I'm going to start sketching yeah. in. We're going to use the belief face. I'm going to use those belief. I'm going to use my two B, and I'm going to put in a belief face right here. And I'm going to think about my little gesture of my face. I have to decide if she's going to be up or down. 
she's going to be down. I'll curve the line this way. For you know, she's going to be like curved and winsome, or she's going to be kind of like up and defiant. So I have to decide that. Now, there's there's lots of people who have lots of good questions here that I see coming in, and and some of them like Rebecca and Misha both wanted to know, um, can you erase tracing paper? Yeah, you can. And you're going to on... see me do this. Okay, so you can erase it. Thank goodness, because Lord knows you need to. Now, uh, another question here. Can you use uh, tracing paper on just about any medium? How, how do you mean that? Well, I, I think what it means is like, uh, uh, do you, and, and you know, so Eve, I'll go back here. I, maybe I misread a couple questions anyway here. So Eve uh, asked specifically, do you transfer tracing uh, from the tracing paper to your desired media? Yes, always. Now, so this is all worked out here, and you're going to see me do this. I'm going to show you the whole process. And you could, you can use the tracing paper method over watercolor, acrylic. Yeah, today I'm going to do it over watercolor, but you can do it over uh, any surface that you have a method of transfer for. Now, this might not work for oil because they stay wet, right? Um, well, you could, okay, like, yes, the surface should be dry. If you're transferring over a wet surface, you're going to have to use projection. Yeah. Have to. Uh, like the oil painters did and the okay. masters. Yeah. So right now what I'm doing is I'm taking my belief face and my gesture. You can see this gesture of this line created this gesture here. And I'm curving a cocked head that's sort of curved over here towards the left. And see how that creates more do drama? Yeah. So uh, this actually... Piece. And I'm lengthening the neck because I tend to get a little... Venus on all my stuff. Now, Avalon was just asking something around that. She was like, my work is really stagnant. Do you have any tips for making it more dynamic? I would say um, dynamic drawing is always in the gesture sketch. Um, we need to do a Bean Man class because that really talks about gesture. But basically, whenever you look at something, right, this B, the gesture of the B. See, a lot of people think gesture, gesture is uh, a stick figure. Right? And they'd be like, look, it's a B, but it's not. The gesture of the B is this curve. See the curve? Yeah. Now, he's pretty interesting as he is, but if I take that, if I ex extenuate that gesture, right, and I take him along this line more, he'll right. be a more interesting B than if he was just centrally placed. See, so gesture, a whether it's a horse, it just adds a little drama to your stuff. And all figures, all lines, everything has a gesture to it. Um, fashion illustration is really good to look at. Uh, Holgarth is a really good artist to look at for that. So I've laid my eye line, which if you guys, you know, remember on the Believe Face. And we're going to be recovering. I'm going to have some recap Believe Face videos coming out. Uh -huh. So all these placements are a little bit easier. But look how much of this is forehead. Yeah. Right. A lot of this is forehead. And then, you know, between the chin and the eye line, I'm going to put a nose line. And I can even drop my eye line down. See how much I'm just moving my line, eye line up and down? Every sketch I showed you earlier come, starts out like this nonsense. Right. So I'm going to sit there and I'm like, there's a mouth. I know I need a nose. And I am going to work my eyes too big. <laughs> let's just get that out in the open right now right the eyes whatever i'm doing with them they're going to be way too big papa Salo would like to know is this the real art sherpa i see no fancy hat <laughs> this is the art sherpa is sometimes a fancy hat sometimes a fancy necklace we are, we are hopefully transitional beings that do a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm <laughs> never going to give up my right to put on a kooky hat, man. That's, that's going to be for life, right? So now I have this you sort could... of placed in, and I know where my features are, and I've got to decide, do I like that? Is that telling an interesting story? You could don the apron at any, any time. You could don the apron at any time, right? I'm going to just I'm gonna talk about maybe the hair a little bit. And actually, I think it'd be fun to put a bun right here. So that balances all this. And maybe a little curl. On hair, if your hair is stiff, if I just do a stiff line across here, 
that just takes away a lot of the energy. I got to have a really good reason to putting a hard eye line here, design wise. Mm -hmm. It needs to have purpose. I'm not saying you could never do it. I hate it when things say never do. But what I'm saying is, think about it. Every line conveys a whole lot about your your story in your art piece. Whether you're painting super realistically or you're painting very fancifully, your lines matter. And so just know that every object down to your signature that you place into your, your space is impacting you while you paint it and then the viewer when they view it. And both of you have to get something worthwhile out of the canvas. So I like this line here. I'm extended over. See how this line is gesture on the hair? Yeah. So I'm thinking that's cool. This is going to be a bit of a self-portrait. So I'm going to put some some objects in here and some things in there that make this feel like me. Now, uh, let's see here. Uh, and one of the things we did when you guys were away, when I was away, actually, over the hurricane, is we all did a um, self-portrait. But you guys were super literal on the whole. Not everybody. Mm -hmm. But on the whole. There was a lot of literal interpretation. Now, when, when there's some questions, uh, did, when choosing a projector, did you have one that you, you particularly use? I am not up. There's <laughs> my family has a really old projector. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that is by Canon, I think. Um, and what I would say about that is there are better projectors now, <laughs> and I think there's even something that converts your phone. Yeah. So. What I would say is look for the technology that gives you the best possible results. I am just thinking about a poppy right here. I like that because I like poppies. And then I'm, I'm feeling like feeling like I want to put a big piece right here. And then let's put some feathers up this way. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, so see this line, how this line enforces this shape? Yes. Right, and I like that, and then this comes here, and I'm just kind of keeping everybody on here. Right, and then I've got to think, anything else that I want to add, I'm definitely putting a little B. Our little B guy is going to be in our amber. Right, and I think I just need some more feathers, maybe. I think that's what I'll do over here, is some more feathers. So probably like... Figure out how many poppies I want. I might have to have a three-quarter poppy. So right now I'm just sketching out like the idea. I I will gesturally loosely put in what I think it's going to be, and then when I like it, when I like the layout, I sit my coffee mm -hmm. and I look at it. I'm going to look at it in the TV right now. She looks like she's like from Hellraiser. <laughs> a little Cenobite there. She's going to go a different way. So. Uh <laughs> So Agnes would like to say hello. She said, "Hi, Agnes." Dorothy was quite uh, was was curious. Uh, is there no picture in picture today? No, because I don't know what I'm going to do. So you're just so going to. If I had a picture in picture before I knew what I was going to do. You're winging whoa. it. No, I I am, because the thing is, I, I get asked a lot. One of the number one questions you guys ask me is, "How do you make your art? Where do you get your ideas? How are you doing that?" You're watching me do this right now. So my I, my first idea I I thought of is I saw a really cool amber necklace. I could not afford. <laughs> right. And then I saw some colors that I really like that involve some poppies and some turquoise and I've been putting together I'm, I want to redesign my studio and I've been putting together some design boards and so I'm really excited about some colors and some textures and so that's been kind of percolating in my brain and I've been having to do a lot of sketches for Halloween week and that's been percolating in my brain because whatever I'm working on one thing I'm 20 paintings ahead. Right. And so... I have, I have notebooks of ideas. That's something I would really recommend that you get is a little notebook or note keeping system. I don't, it could be, was the Hibonacci's, the Fibonacci, Fibonacci, whatever that journal is, everybody's excited about, whatever it is where you keep a note. If you, I, I'm old school, I have a little cute notebook. Um, you just write your notes in it, write your notes in it. Say I had an idea. I have an idea. You can do a little doodle sketch because once your creative starts, it's going to, go 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 and it's going to be more than you can just remember you got to write some stuff down or you're never going to be able to keep up with your own instincts right. and also sometimes it's hard to get an idea and if you're really new to it you don't know if it's a good idea or if it needs simplification sometimes just taking it down 
you know, I love, like I'll get suggestions like Spider Man on a bike fighting a tiger. Right. Sketch that out. Is that a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta find. You won't know till you put that on paper, right? Right. Is that a really? That could be the most epic painting ever. So you're gonna use the tracing paper today and show us how you how uh, I transfer it on watercolor paper and then use some media to sort of work out my color story. So it's not a fast process. This is kind of a. This is kind of a. You gotta love the big art quest. Video day. <laughs> That's what this is. It's a big art quest video day. So now I, I think I've got my 6B just because this is out. And I'm going to put in my nose. So let's put in our little ball. And that's like, do I feel okay? The, the proportions and stuff of the piece. And so one of the things that happens to you guys when you do self-portraiture is that you're so literal about yourselves. And you're like, the things you like, the things that you don't like, that maybe you're missing the stuff that really makes you authentically you. Mm -hmm. Which is probably not your features. Yeah. And probably more the things that you're passionate about or excited about or... So Tara's very, very impressed. She's like, how do you proportion the face so well? Well, practice. And practice, practice. Uh, well, there, that... There's face math and that that's... you can rely on constantly. And so we're going to do a video about that. We've done a long video about that. That's we're going to do a face, short right? video. Huh? That's the belief, the belief face. This is the belief face. This The idea of this face, there's a basic face that they teach every single artist ever in the universe. Where they basically explain to you, this is the skull in between the top of the head and the chin. About the halfway mark is the eyes. And then halfway between that is the nose. And halfway between the nose and the chin is the mouth. Right. Right. And then the inner eyelid lines up to the outer nose, which comes up and drops an eyebrow. Right, so the the line of the face, and so I can see already that I got to move my, you know, my eye over, right. But I do that as I'm going, and then the mouth. There's got to be divot here, and then I know what's gonna happen with my mouth, and I can drop a chin, a more defined chin. I like a little ball chin. And for my face, I probably need to to round it out. Guess what? I'm not gonna draw myself the age I am. That's that's whack. <laughs> I'm going to draw myself the age I feel. I'm looking in a mirror and paint myself all day. <laughs> Don't need that much reality. <laughs> what reality? Go get on the scale. I Run love the whole how you day. look. I, huh? lo I love how you look. I love how your hair Well, thank everything. you very much. But I'm just saying, who? Uh, I'll tell you what. If you are under the age of 30, here's a, here's a peek into the, to your future. You'll, you won't ever feel older. You'll feel more centered and you'll like yourself better. Mm -hmm. And you'll get a real good sense of like, you know what? I don't have to eat this food I don't want to eat just because it's some holiday that I got invited to that I didn't want to go to. You'll get a good sense of self. But you'll, you, you won't feel like, I don't know, less than. You still feel like you. Yeah. Whole life. So I've got a nice little nose there that I'm liking. I like the nose actually quite a lot. And you can see I like to, a lot of people like to do the two balls here. I actually like to do the ball here first and work I'm gonna zoom in on that. the bow out. This is a thing that I just preferentially do. I like to do my two balls. It's a weird thing I do a little different. I'm not saying no artist in the universe have ever did it this way. I'm just saying it's the way I like to get it in. And then I work out the bow. Because sometimes the mouth doesn't have a bow and this gives me a lot more room. Mm -hmm. to work out my mouth. I know I'm going to bring it here. I'm giving myself a little smile because I feel like I'm a happy person. <laughs> you are a happy person. <laughs> I like it. You know, make sure that this is lined up. So there's the column, right? So then I know I can get my eyebrows in. And are these a little bit Margaret Keene? Yeah, they are. But you know what? That was, she was very formative to my life when I was coming up. Well, yeah, you were there. Were, yeah, you know, I was there. You, it, was, it was all in the, that you know, the, 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 the shopping malls. And that was on my, you know, all that artwork. There was a whole movement that she started. I remember the shock when it turned out, well, we all thought it was Walter, didn't we? Well. I, I didn't really care because I was little, but my mom was certainly shocked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and also because, you know, when she came after him, she was a Jehovah's Witness and our, you know, our family was Jehovah's Witnesses and. So that was like stuff we got to hear about. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So see how I've created this. This eye is too big. 
but I'm choosing to use this feature and enlarge it and exaggerate it to say something important to the viewer. Since Byzantine Empire, we've liked big-eyed staring dolls. <laughs> it's a species thing, I'm telling you. But if I do that, then I get, I get to do a lot of wonderful color and expression. Look how nice she looks. Oh, yeah. Right? There's a lot of ways to do portraiture. There, somebody was told recently, this kind of inspired this for me, in our group that you had to be able to really rock likenesses to be a portrait artist, which I thought was kind of crazy because there's portrait artists that are way more abstract. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of portrait artists that are known for their style. Yeah. I was like, that's a, that's a, I'm like, I can kind of see that. Like, if, if your job was to do the presidents, like, that would be, and, and that would be very important, I guess, to be able to, to paint your politician how they look. I'm putting my ears in. I, I like the way it was explained to me by Lisa, which is you've got to put them where the glasses go. <laughs> oh yeah that's that. funny i remember yeah. but some people like to put them down or up i just actually there's weird things that i will do correctly so that you know when i go to put her in right now see i'm i'm thinking about where do i want these eyes to be she could be rolling them right up here she could be <laughs> looking over to the side right that's f that's true you could just take this little painting roll her eyes and then you would have a teenager you could cross them right in the center it be, I'll show you a couple things. Stick a little tongue out. We don't have to. If you guys don't have to be anywhere, I don't. And I can put these right back. Look, it does erase on tracing paper. Oh. See, so I can change my mind. It erases quite nicely. As long as I don't press in too hard. Tara's like, if you can spend some time on the nose when you're done, that's awesome. What, the nose is really a lot easier than people think. It really is just this little ball. And there's this nice little shadow right under here. And then sometimes it's nice to cast a little shadow down because the nose is an object on your face. <laughs> right? And then probably I will actually have this be very diminished through here. I won't create a very large bridge because I want a stylized piece. See? Isn't that nice? That's actually nice to me. Yeah. I just like it. Let's see if I, if I, if I do this. Look how goofy she looks. <laughs> now she's making a silly face. Now you she's could, making a silly face, you, isn't she? She could stick a tongue out. Yeah. I probably, if I decided to do something like this, I probably would pull a funny mouth, too. And I would probably pull, so if I pulled the mouth over to this side, I'd pull the nose over to this side. Uh-huh. Because these muscles would move this all over. Uh-huh. It's just, you know, you could you could be like... She could be like, I swear there's, you know, you have a lot in common with like some great sculptures. Look at some great sculptures. They're all looking up to heaven. Mm -hmm. Right? You want to give something an angelic feel. Tell an angelic story. Say you're a person of significant faith and spirituality. Mm -hmm. Right? And you're trying to talk about yourself. Have you ever thought about adding those elements to your self-portrait? Not, here's my features and, and, and here's, you know, all this stuff specifically about me, but how about the stuff that really matters about you as a person? You know, are you silly and goofy? Make sure you draw yourself with a silly face. Um, are you, you know, super winsome? Are you sad? Like, who are you? Mm -hmm. These things should be expressed. You know, actually, I really like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's done actually really nice. Done. <laughs> <laughs> done and done. No, that was a neat way to go. I'm liking this. So I also like the, the look, to, but I like this too, because I tend to, I'm going through a really interesting time right now. So I think this is, is really talking about some stuff I'm going through. I'm having a hard time with all the sad things happening around the world. Mm -hmm. It's really causing me to struggle. You know, I'm just, I'm just, sometimes that stuff just keeps me up at night. I can't um, get past it. So I really have to work my way through. Oh, see, I put that eyeball, look where I did. I focused it more. It looks now like it's angry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a girl. Pay attention to where that pupil's going, because otherwise it gets, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking up has to be looking up. 
La, la, la. <laughs> no, these things matter, man. <laughs> and that's what tracing paper is about, because I can sit there and see all this out. Right? So, I'll give myself some. I don't have a lot of lid. But I, I still, I, I have hungry lids, but I'm still going to give myself some lid here. I don't know if I'm going to, I got a bunch of grief recently about doing sad fairy tales. I don't know. Um, but she might be because I'm just feeling a certain kind of way lately. So. <laughs> Work it out on the canvas. I think whenever you're having a feeling, if you can take it out in a healthy way in your canvas. Yeah. Not as a substitute for like health care. But as, a, as another process to unpack how you might be feeling, mm -hmm. it's good. I'm just seeing the weight of these. So I like to come in and just say, how weighted are you? Well, Pamela would like to say thank you for helping her out through a, a, for a, through a very hard past six months. Oh, you are very welcome, Pamela. And thank you for hanging out with us during this very last this is very difficult last six months. We've we've appreciated you guys being with us too. It's meant a lot as we've gone through our own stuff. Because I think we all do, don't we? Yeah. Nobody's well, got an easy boat. We're all rowing. We're all just rowing as hard as we can. I don't think anything upsets me as much as someone trying to actually poke a hole in my boat and mess with me. I know. It's like, I think what? I'm paddling are, so hard I just don't have a sense of humor about it at all. I, it's like, are, can't you just go mess with your own boat and yeah, leave mine alone? Yeah, like, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> We've got all naval analogies. <laughs> I think it's because you've been watching the Oroville. Oh, yeah, it probably is. Actually, Halt and Catch Fire mostly has had me lately. That's funny. I relate way too much to Cameron. <laughs> I was all crying at the end of Mutiny. All right. John doesn't like when I watch upsetting shows. So let's see how this is coming in. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm starting to get... Now I you're like kind of seeing how I... I like you guys are like, how do you do that? Totally how I do it. This is, this is how she starts to come in. I'm going to work out her hair. And I know I'm going to want to do like a little amber piece. Like hanging with like a thing and some feathers. And I definitely need some poppies. And now... Like, once I get those resolved, I got to decide a color story. Mm. Super. You guys are always like, how do you pick your colors? Want we'll to find out? Any questions while I'm sipping? While you're sipping, let me scroll up and see here. So, do you have any suggestion when, when doing the, the balls for noses and eyes on how to get those balanced correctly? The shape, the, the size proportion? Um, in... What relationship I would want to know what they mean. So I think Taro, Taro just saying that she she couldn't seem to get the balls correct when doing those. She can't seem to get them right. Well, one, there's not one set. There's a general relationship. Okay. So if I've got a nose ball here, right? So I've got a little nose ball here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just be gestural. Just be like, la, la, la. Right? Yeah. But I put these very far forward. This is one kind of nose. And this is a nose somebody could have. Right? This could be a way that you talk about a nose. If I put the nose ball here, but put these very far back, you get more of a pointed little nose. Don't I? Oh, yeah. Right? So it's just about when you're, when you're trying to decide how to do something... You know, and you're looking at where where are these objects in relationship, and then we have this idea, well, this one kind of nose is more beautiful than this one kind of nose. That's not really true. There's just, there's just a human. <laughs> there's this thing on our face that we there's all have. There's this thing on our face, and, and, and so they're not, there's not a one-size-fits-all answer to that, but there is generally going to be one larger ball and two smaller balls to the side where you put them up if you pull them back or if you pull them forward changes the whole nature of that nose if you're doing it at the side right it's it's still like so I've got my little say I'm drawing a, a, a face to the side I'm still gonna put my little ball right there and I have just a little ball for a lip oh. another little ball for a lip my person will smile, right? See, it's just there's these there's these shapes. 
that come down. So if you think about a head, right? You got your little head. There's this like little skull bit. You just think about like what's here. Actually, it's more like that. Right? No. So there's a jaw because you've got a jawline. Some teeth here. Some teeth here. And this nose thing happens. Look at a skull for a second. Because it'll tell you a lot <laughs> about, about your head. Right? So when you're looking at things, I know that's a like really goofy, doggy looking <laughs> skull. But the point is, is when you're looking at these objects, you're like, when you start really observing it, you're like, oh, it's just this little circle. And this little, they have to relate to each other in some way. Mm -hmm. As long as you get that basic construct down. Now, do you find much difference between the, the different tracing papers? Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'm real particular. Um, not that this is at all the best. This is just what I'm used to. I like the Strathmore tracing paper. Works pretty good for you. I keep buying it intentionally. So yes, you're not. It's accessible. I trust it. It tears out. Oh my gosh, there's so many, so many <laughs> tracing papers don't tear out right. Oh, let's see. Paper doesn't take pencil. Well, that's a useless tracing paper. Uh, paper all falls out because it's not glued correctly. Right. That's not helpful. Paper won't come out. Right. There's been some comical moments where I'm all over this studio like a just, like Lucille Ball just, trying to get paper out going the indestructible tracing paper. It's, it yeah, it goes from what, you can't get any of it out to it all releasing all simultaneously in a cloud of comical tracing paper. Can't which, re erase off of it. It doesn't transfer. It's super slip. There is some stuff. I, and no, I didn't just go buy vellum and think it was tracing paper. I know the difference between vellum and tracing paper. It's like a there is not a standard. Uh, there's not an industry standard. They don't get together at NAMTA and have a tracing paper. Maybe they do, but I didn't see a tracing there was, paper. There was, no, there was no <laughs> tracing paper conglomerate happening that we could find. None. But if we find out that there is a secret back room. Then we are super sorry to those people. We'll be there with our cameras trying to expose them this NAMTA. <laughs> <laughs> that we're going to do a bit of investigative journalism. Is there a secret conspiracy of art supplies. I don't know. I just feel like there should be like this bug trapped in amber. A nice big amber pendant. I love amber. It's one of my very, very favorite stones. We'll do these little beads off the side. They might be turquoise. I don't know. I don't have any turquoise reference, so probably you, not. You know the three or four industry people who watch the show who just, you know, so I definitely want to talk about some feathers. Maybe I'll go like this. So what I am is I'm looking at this little feather. I'm like, hey, feather, what the heck you got going on? And feather's like, oh, I don't know. I got some fuzzy little bits here. And then I'm sort of this shape. Let me come over and zoom in on their feather. Feather. I have reference. Well, I would say I was trying to catch both the reference and what you're drawing, but it's, it's better that I kind of, if you pull the reference closer to the drawing, then I can bring a tighter shot. I think I'll do a little feather here and maybe a little feather there. Yeah? Yep. And then I'm trying to decide if I want another little poppy over here or not. Or if it's too much. I think that might be too much. I think this, these three little feathers. Yeah? And then these poppies. Let's look at some poppies for a second. Because we all remember poppies, but then you got to stop and think about poppies a little more intensely if you're going to be doing something like this. So I know I've got to have a central focus bit and then there's, I know I'm going to need a bunch of this around here. Looks like I've got a little pillowcase petal happening right here. It's going to be really easy to do in watercolor. You're going to paint this in watercolor? Oh, so easy in watercolor. Well, because watercolor lets me think about some of my color values before getting into my acrylics. Mm. And that can be quite nice. Right? So just, huh, what a weird little, but that's what it seems to be. And then do I have another, I have another little poppy over here and I've got my B reference. Nope, I, but I feel like given this, I could curve up a petal and say there's a dark thing and probably get away with that. I'm not going to worry about any of the foliage, but I have it there for reference if I feel like this is not working out for me. Now, two things I can do. I can just ink it right here, which is the safest way to do it. 
in that I won't be altering or changing what I've done by the tracing process. So either right. I tear this out, put it underneath a clean sheet to get a completely clean piece. If I don't mind the graphite rubbing everywhere, then I just ink right over it. Okay. So you're just going to go right there and do it. So again, I'm just using this little Tombow acid-free paint pencil thingy. And I'm just going to say, oh, I know I need some of that. You guys are like, oh my gosh, this looks like a traceables. Yep. Now you know. Get kind of talky-talky with my line. Because I know these little flowers are a bit wrinkly. So I'm just inking this out, right? Let's be inky. And then little inky bits. We know we want a little dark center here. That seems to work. So I'm just going to come through and ink this. Once this is inked, I can revisit this design indefinitely. So say I really love, like say I nail a face. And I've seen a lot of artists do this, like they, they even like sell the faces that they ink in, you know, so people can work from them. And what I'm saying is, if you create your favorite face and you do it in this process, you can transfer her as many times as you need. And then if you add a scan, say you just take this to your flatbed scanner, like say you have a scanner printer combo at home, now you have a digital copy. So even if it gets torn or, gosh, the way it's been going lately, earthquake, fire, flood, mm -hmm. you'll be okay. So I'm just, sometimes my lines will get thick because my hand gets unsteady. It's a problem I have. The divot. I love that little smile crease. Because this is how I feel inside. Much more important than the outside. Who you are inside, much more important than the outside. Yeah. More important than what people say about you. More important than anything. I really like the poppy there. Do we? I like it. I like it too. It's going to be really great with the color. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm having the lines that are important to me. Over here, kind of an odd angle to eyebrow up at. <laughs> you can rotate it. Yeah, I know. I'm just sometimes I hate to, to at all mess with you. No, no, you're good. I'm, I'm. Now it's I'm gonna have a hair curl in front of my bun, right? I got this little bun here. My bun, my bun, my happy, happy bun. Take this down. This is really fun for me. This is like when I'm just goofing around and thinking stuff out. This is the weird little stuff that I do. Do you know what I forgot to put in? Mm. The B. The B. The B. The B in the amber? Mm-hmm. Well, you could go back and... Let's foreshorten a bead there. Or hide it. Like, See how it's tucked behind that? Just a little bit of perspective. It's always a good idea if you can think of it. The obscured bead. The obscured bee. All right. Do, 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 do. Now, when inking, does thickness matter? Thickness for what? The, the line? line? Yeah. It can't, you know, in that you're tracing it over, it's not important, but say there's some information about that you need to know later about how much weight or importance you put on something, it can be. Think of this as your Hansel and Gretel. You've had a really good idea. You're super excited about your really good idea. You feel like it can change everything. <laughs> but sometimes later it can be hard to remember exactly what made an idea a good idea. And it can be really hard to find your way back mm. to that good idea. 
B. No, those were Tombow markers you were using, right? Those are the Tombows. I'm going to get this Pacific Arc Mechanical Pencil because I just I just need some smaller lead maybe. And I don't even know this is small enough. I may need to resharpen this. Da, 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 da. So, you know, I'm just telling you guys, look, there's nothing here you have to use because I'm using it. None of this is the gateway to success. I'm just telling you what I'm using and why. Just transparency. Just transparency. It irks me when I when I see artists like just like, I'm gonna show you this really cool art, but I'm not gonna tell you what I used. Right. Okay, dude. <laughs> so let's put a little B in here. And I'm definitely I think I'm gonna put it right here. Right. Right. And I'm gonna sit there and say, Alright, you got this little head thing. It's gonna be a pretty big B. This is a prehistoric B bear. Mm. But it's because I want it to be a focal part of Patty was asking. I'm putting a little thorax stuff in here. While you're while you're thinking that out, I'm gonna give you a great one of these multitasking jobs because. Oh, I don't mind. You know what Cinnamon loves is when she's having to do some thoughtful design and <laughs> to be asked a cerebral question because those I'll things. I'll do my best. Those things go together so well. Um, so Patty was asking, uh, how do we become less critical of our own work? Wow. See, I told you <laughs> what I told you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what it is is we have to start really evaluating, and it's hard. We have to start evaluating what it is we're trying to get out of the piece. So right today, I have, I have a set of goals I'm trying to get out of this piece. One, which is to share with you guys how I create, but another thing is to create artwork, of course, that I'm super proud of. And there is a set of conditions, right, mm -hmm. that I probably have in my head <laughs> that say when it is. Right? And, I'll, and I'll have times when I'm, like, not there. And there are two, two things that we're fighting as, a, as artists, right? One, which is a set of challenges that help us grow as creative beings. And the other thing is a set of obstacles that we place in front of ourselves because we, we create expectations or conditions that are literally impairing our journey. So what I would say is if you're starting out, and you've been to the Sistine Chapel and you just haven't drawn before and you set the Sistine Chapel as the condition of your success, we're well, going to be miserable a whole lot, right? If, or, or at least for a while until you do a lot of practice. <laughs> right. And for many people, their entire art career, because that, not yeah. be that may not be your natural creative expression. Um, if you start a creative process and you say to yourself, I'm going to follow along with this tutorial and I'm going to have a really great time and I'm going to learn these skills and you focus like on the skills and you say, all right, I did this really well and I could work on this. That's a set of challenges where you're going to grow as an artist. Yeah. Right. So like in the example of what we do, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to do Daenerys and I'm going to paint hair. Right. And I'm going to do the blending. All right. So like even that happened with me when I got off of my nose. Because I started to melt down and get in my own head and I set a condition that this, this whole image had to be a particular way. Mm. All of a sudden there emotionally and I had to back down into what was my goal again with that piece. It was to demonstrate shaded blending with tonality using a grayscale so you guys could understand how, how skin tone blends. And also to demonstrate how we could paint very light hair, hair that's very light and have all the texture and flow. Mm -hmm. And then once I was able to step back and go, all right, if I take the nose, like, is this the most perfect nose? That I've, you know, does it look exactly like the actress's nose? Or if I over tipped it, I could just be obsessed in that. That was a condition that I created. That was an obstacle I created. It's not that if I repainted her, I might not, I might specifically set the goal. I'm going to nail this nose. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I hope I'm, I hope I'm making sense. It's, it's trying to be out of your own way. And, and. Oh, and also. Don't ask for criticism until you're just up for people's opinions. Yeah. You know, it's, don't you, do it. You can ask for criticism too soon real easily. You just know, and you don't need it. You don't need other people's opinions for a long, long time. Yeah. You are totally good at looking and doing self-evaluation. And, you know, and the thing is, is like, I mean, it's one thing to say, how could I improve this? And then people could say, oh, you know, a shadow might really yeah. help. That's one thing. But then there's like some people will be like, I don't know what it is. Did you mean it to look like that? And then you're like, Yeah, you don't. Uh, you don't uh, need brother, sister, mother, daughter, uh, best friend, cousin, uncle, anyone's approval on your artwork. 
Yeah, that is really going to make some... That's very challenging to do because because everybody's a critic. <laughs> that's a little bee. So I'm just trying to make this little bee feel more bee-like. And I have to make it feel like it's an amber, so that's going to be an interesting challenge. It's a it, challenge, not a condition. And I, I think the other thing is is that... If I can say, as as watching a lot of artists come up now through the channel, yep. um, recognize that it's practice and not magic. Like Zoe Hung and likes to say, because yeah. that's her total saying. That's her hashtag. If you ever search the hashtag practice not magic, yeah. you'll see her students. And and that you have to be accepting that you're doing practice in your in, in your in your work process, and that you know not everything is going to be perfect. You're going to do a lot. I'm gonna flip this over in graphite the back. Oh, you should explain why. Okay, so I'm going to want to make a transfer. Now okay. I could use transfer paper, but I like graphite because I can erase it and it's cheap. I do have some brand new, really cool Sorrel uh, transfer paper that my mom totally turned me on to. That I'm going to be using for the acrylic paintings. We're going to use it for the cabin. Um, but this is just a really good way to get stuff directly on white. Okay. On point. So I just rub. You've used chalk. You or could use pastels. pastels. You could use chalk. Anything that will make a rubbing that when you trace back over it, it will transfer, you can do. See how I'm doing? I do. So this is how you do that. Later when everyone's like, how do you transfer? You'll be like, right here. But give them the time code. Don't make them watch the whole video. This is just for you guys. So hopefully for everybody who decided to come today and watch the video, this was a helpful, helpful class. Oh, yeah. Because we're covering it. It's just not a speedy process. I have been so busy. Uh, so you I'm know. just making sure there's enough graphite to transfer and that every line I need to transfer is uh, covered adequately in the graphite. Some people, by the way, there's not a right, wrong way of doing this. Some people are very precious and very neat, and they're going to come right over just their lines leaving the other paper untouched. I don't do that. And it's not a right or wrong. It can, if you do it like I do, can leave uh, graphite places you don't want. And so um, illustrationists who are having a heart attack right now, I know, but I'm fine. It doesn't bug me and I'm painting anyways. <laughs> I know, I know, but I'm fine. It doesn't bug me and I'm painting anyways. That's a good thing you can say when somebody offers criticism. I know, I know, but I'm fine. It doesn't bug me, and I'm painting it. <laughs> Just be like. So I have to say, I've been so busy pushing buttons and m m manning all of my stuff uh -huh. that I didn't even look over. We've been way over 300 people have here. Have we? Oh, yeah. They we bought can a, bubble. It's we safe. Could, we could bubble. It's safe. The, there you go. Get you a little bubble going. You know what I don't have, though? I don't, I don't have any music cued at all. I'm like over it's here. It's in my head. It's in your head. It's, Can you it's, put today's some? Today's the cranberries. In my head. In my, sorry. Hey. Oh, I, I, I think Sound I can fix it. Sound there you go. Sorry. <laughs> 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 so there's a song in my head all the time. All the time. Kids got it too. And so you know now. Now we guess you know what we have a lot of people who've come forward to say that they wanted to do some music for us. You know, Michael. I love that. Michael's done this one. You know, and that was really awesome. He came forward, and he actually he's done a couple others for us. I love and Michael's so, music. Michael's really good. Yeah. And we're we're gonna have a couple more pieces coming for So thank you guys for all coming and joining us today. Does he want to be Mike? Mike. Well, it goes by both sometimes. Okay. So you just never know. Never know. But uh, well, so thank you guys for coming and hanging out, man. We've got a big crew here today. We've got like over, over I over highly people recommend people hanging out. music and joy in your workspace and mm -hmm. studio. I'm taking my own advice. And redesigning. Oh, yes, we are. We've got a whole lot of new stuff that's coming up here. I've decided not to wait for my dream anymore. I'm going to DIY that sucker. Yeah. No. Oh. So, well, thank you guys coming on for hanging out and, <laughs> and, like, you know, being part of our family. We really, really appreciate it and just love having you guys here. So It is the fun, is it not? It is. We'll let, we'll let Simi get back to her all regularly right. scheduled. But I just wanted to say thank you guys for all coming. I'm going to be temporarily wasteful because I want to look at some colors and I want to see how they are in relationship to each other. So see how color impacts a drawing? Ooh, yes. All right, so this is a little freehand drawing I did. And then I just colored a little bit and I wanted to create this sort of whimsical manic energy. Mm -hmm. So I think I achieved that really well. You can get the sense of the sweater and the bulkiness of it and his goofiness in his face. And then you guys remember the deer when I was testing out the, uh, we should actually get these both out 
Yeah, you can take them out and then set them aside. Yeah. Okay. Oh, come get them. <laughs> John's like, I don't want to get up. I'm sorry, babe. All right. So I have my, um, you can see I have these fun, playful things. But here's, here's my little jam here. So this is my core watercolor that I have here. And oh. I'm going to load up some thoughtfulness. I also have some Daniel Smith in here and I think, and Cotman because it was Docs and I got it as a sample once. And I was like, that's useful. So this is Thalo Turquoise. We mix this all the time, don't we? In our show, we mix Thalo Turquoise. Thalo Blue and Thalo Green make Thalo Turquoise. I'm going to put out some yellow ochre. And watercolor even more than acrylics. Uh, the pigment numbers matter. Because people like to name things whimsically. Now the thing about watercolor is that even when these... So these are in these little tubes, right? These are in these little tubes, but even as these dry, <sighs> try and decide if I want to put out, I'm going to put out some hands of yellow just in case I need to warm anything up. So the issue with these is if they dry inside the tube, that's a bit of a pain. I'm sure there's a hack on how to get that out. Let's get quinacridone gold deep. That's going to be kind of a rust. We've used that in our acrylic painting. Oh, no, too much is coming out. Here's the good news. Even as this dries on the palette, until it's gone, it's usable. Oh, yeah. So you're not you're not messed up. You're not stuck. This is Peril Red. Nope. This is a bit like CAD in that it's a very warm red. And I think that's going to be super important with the lily. But I may still put out... This is a Lizarin Crimson, so that's nice to have out because I might. This is a Daniel Smith. Um, I have Holbein, and I have Core, and I have Daniel Smith watercolors. I am not an art supply snob, I promise. <laughs> promise, 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 promise. We've, I've also got permanent Lizarin Crimson. I've got some Burnt Sienna, which I think in this case might be useful. I don't know. And I'm going to see what this palette will give me and then if I need to add to it. Because I want to decide the kind of colors that I want to have for her. I'm going to moisten this with my mister. I'm going to moisten that a little bit. Because I want a nice soft whatever. And I'm going to get my number 8. I think most things can be handled with a number 8. So this is the Thalo Turquoise. And I like that just right out of the tube. I think that's nice. It's good rich, so it's got a nice rich value. So I know I like that. I'm going to rinse this out really well. Now, there's a couple, real, real quick question here. Do, do you have any opinion on light boards for tracing? Um, they can be really useful. They're expensive, but they're useful. Yeah. I wish it was brighter than that. I'm not sure I'm feeling that, that red there. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wait, there it is. I think I had some Thalo turquoise still on my brush. Oh. Let's see, what kind of orange can I get here? So I've been just really into these bohemian colors, and... Oh, I like that. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that is. See if we've got what the, how the deep red in, injects into here. Okay, that's okay, I think. I don't think we've lost anything. Let's see what happens when we take our little handset over to our Thalo Turquoise. Adequate green. So I think we're okay, like... I feel like this palette has a very fall feel, a very rich feel. Oh, there it is. This is one of my favorite colors. So I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Let's see what our Thalo Turquoise says about this color. What kind of purple? Oh, that's more of a slate gray that they make together. So that's interesting. And I'm sure this is going to do a similar thing over here because, right, there's so much red and orange 
in the red. So there's a nice series of colors. Pull this away. I'm just playing with, before I get onto my canvas, what I can get with what I have. Does that make sense? Totally. What can you get with what you have? What's there? What's not there? I think one color I'm missing that you know I would want is a purple. So I'm going to just playfully put out a diox just in case. Right? Just in case. And I want to see what it looks like with everything because I may be like, oh man, that ruins the whole piece. So there's a website called Design Seeds. Design seeds as in something that you plant. And it has already pre-created color stories that you can get inspired by. Oh, that's really nice. So I like that palette, don't I? Yeah. That's a nice color palette. Guess what? Unlike my acrylic paint, which dries in a minute, right? You know it's acrylic paint if it's drying on the artist really fast. <laughs> if it's not drying, it's probably oils. Um... <laughs> But the watercolor, even if it dries, I can reactivate it with water indefinitely. If I did this on Yupo paper, I could really, really reactivate it even once it's in the paper. Mm. So this gives me a lot of options to think about some of my design sensibility. If I want to change something. Now look here, I have the option to also reposition a sketch. Right? Like if I wanted it to be a half. I could come in on the sides. So you can really, really reuse these and even sometimes end up with fresh pieces. Literally, you are only limited by your imagination. Yeah. Where did I put my tape? So I just want to show you transferring this over and how we start to like just ink and play it in. And I want my little cheat sheet of colors right here. Just so you know what you're grabbing. It's just so, yeah, I know what's going on. Um, if I was even more organized, I would write any mixes that I did so I'd know how to recreate them at a glance, just in case my memory was not locked in for that, which it might not be. Mm -hmm. And that happens. So a little note-taking sometimes as artists, we forget to take a few notes. Take a few notes. Notes. I need to take a note about a few notes, let me tell you. <laughs> Thing I could improve in my own studio a lot. I've got this nice little pen here, and I'm going to trace over my drawing. And that is going to transfer this graphite rubbing onto my paper. Just go along here. So by working all this out, what am I not stressed about at this moment? Uh, the cost of this paper under here, the cost of this watercolor pad. Oh, well, cost yes. Cost of my paint. Because you know that you're just going to go ahead and just get that done. Yeah. Now, look, there is this thing where you might create this and after seeing your idea on the paper, not love it as much. But not because you didn't know what you were doing. Not because you didn't evaluate a plan ahead of time. And there is no shame in making a piece of art, looking at it and going, you know, I don't really like it. it happens to me all the time. Well, you had one of those sketches in your in your book you just showed us. Yeah. Yeah, but even so, like, like right now I'm so excited about, like, all my Halloween sketches. I'm, I'm so excited to paint them. I'm so excited to, to see how they come to life. I'm being very careful. If I totally finish the bun, I'm kind of looking to see what's overlapping where my layers are. I tend to be, I tend to rest my hand into my paper, which is a huge mistake. Don't do that. <laughs> but if you do, I've been doing it for years and no one's kicked me out of the art club. Though they tried. No, it's never actually happened. My microphone so, was off, so you probably didn't hear me asking your question there. So uh, the, uh, the quick sort of side question, 
Um, what's hair? What hair dye do you use? I use Splat Rain. That's what I thought. It was Splat. Okay. And I use Ion's Magenta together. Mm, oh. And I've just started try testing out those um, shampoos. You've never used anything out of the tube. You always blend and blend and mix and mix. <laughs> These are little feathers right here. They're not leaves. Just darn colorists. See, I forgot my ear. Sometimes if you use a colored pencil or something that's a different color than your background, it can help you know where you put everything. And what you've already done and what you haven't done yet. Because that can be hard to keep track of. Mm -hmm. It's super frustrating, which is why the tape is here, so I can lift up and check if I missed anything, but not lose the positioning of my sketch. Ah, you can take a peek. Yeah. I use artist tape, but I know for in some places that is crazy expensive. No. Uh, so just use painter's tape or masking tape. Staline asked a question. Hi, Staline. Here. She's like, what, how long, what's the life expectancy of a good brush? A good watercolor brush, longer than you. <laughs> and a good acrylic brush that you're using actively, I would hope it would last like six months, a year. Maybe, definitely a year. It just depends on your use, how well you care for the acrylic brushes. Acrylic wears out the brushes that paint with it, which is why I'm so excited about these, these stronger, more like fortified brushes. But these were just made, so I don't know how long they're going to go. Oh, yeah, ours may ours may actually do better than that performance because they're made we of a more resilient. We don't know yet because yeah. we haven't had them out in the market. You guys are going to let me find out, man. You're going to help me find out. Yeah, we're expecting they should, they should you know. And, and you know, when you talk about the life, the life cycle of a, of a brush, there's, you know, at, you know, is a brush going to carry paint and put it on a canvas forever? Sure. But will it do so with the precision and edge and control that it originally had when it was new? That's kind of what we're talking about. So I'm okay with this. I have enough information. That, you know, that, and that performance profile, uh, you know, it, it changes with how much paint you use, the quality of the paint. You know, because if you're using a really high quality paint that cleans out every time and you're fastidious about not, you know, uh, about, you know, taking care of your brushes, yeah. they can last for a really, really, really long time. But Yeah, reshape, take them to the brush spot off and really care for them. But, you know, if you're just a human. And you leave your brushes in water occasionally and you don't clean them out all the time perfectly. My mom goes through a brush real fast. You know, six months a year is a good... Yeah, that would be a miraculous <laughs> brush for her. You know, it's and and that's you know. That's daily. why I was like all gulp when she was reviewing my brushes. I'm like, man, if anyone can pop a brush, it is my mom. But we're also talking about like daily use. Yeah. So you keep keep that in mind. You know that these are. So just so you know, because you know, I use graphite, guess what? You can erase. I can erase. That's cool. So if I didn't like how anything transferred, or I want to quietly and softly think about this a little more. Staline's like, I'll let you know on the number four cat's tongue because it's all I've been using. I know, just that brush is just a joy. <laughs> the the new Goldilocks, that brush, they're all just joys. Yeah. All right, so we've got this nice little whimsical bun here. It's playful. I might see how this hair blends around here. You know, and I have bangs, so something I'm observing. Because you know me, I like my bangs. It's my, my poor girl Botox. Oh, Margaret was asking a very reasonable question. Where can I order stripper brushes? Uh, if you go to our website, which is a link in the description below, there's like a page. Is it there yet? Yeah. Th well, there's the art sherpa forward slash brushes. And there's a there's a link there to all of the all of the retailers that are currently having that. We update that on a regular basis, so you can find uh, both the uh, the local retailers and online uh, resellers that have those available for you. All right, so now I'm going to start working. One thing that I can do is I can mist an area. Now, hey, guys, don't paint your watercolors vertically. <laughs> don't. Because water does what? It Gravity pulls down? It pulls down. Yes. It really does. All right. 
So, so painting on an easel with watercolors is not generally something you do. And no. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape down my paper a little bit. Oh, gosh darn it. I dirtied my paper Dude, with my dirty hands. You sullied the paper. I did sully the this paper. Is, you know, and this is part of one of the things we're going to work on in the new studio is that we're going to make it so that Cinnamon has an easier time If working. you're doing this for sale or resale and more than a study, make sure you tape being aware of framing. Oh, yeah. Keep that an eighth or under. And I'm taping so the paper doesn't curl because I'm not normally I'd just tape this down to a table. And, and you can always cut down your paper. You can give yourself extra border and then cut yeah. the paper down. Exactly. So just, you know. But I'm wanting kind of a neat washed little area. I'm going to take my Peril Red over to my Hansa and give myself. I just want to see how these colors feel. Right? How do these colors feel? You can get right into the pure pigment. Look how the pure pigment offloads. Now, yes, is that the fact that, you know, these are Core and Daniel Smith? Yeah, probably. I generally get into stuff not because it's pricier. I have no cash, like, emotionally into that. What it is is I just don't like to be messed with. Which I'll tell you, I really hate fighting my media, like, a lot. It irks me. Yeah. Now, I'm doing this of me, so the hair is going to be purple, right? We put out some purple. Is it going to be oh, purple? Oh, you know what we should do if it's me, too? What's that? Quinacridone magenta. Oh, sure. All right, let's put this back out. Can't have it be me without some quinacridone. No. And, and you should splatter paint all over it when you're done. And oh, by the way, quinacridone and, and, and turquoise, uh, thalo turquoise make the coolest color, so. And I, I can get, like... I don't know, 10 paintings out of this amount of paint with watercolor stuff. It's not like you're going to feel like you wasted it. I think for skin tone, I'm going to take a little of my ochre and a little of my quinacridone. Oh. See? In watercolor, what a lot of people don't think about is that the paper is the white. Right. So you've got to preserve your lights. Oh. So in watercolor, I will often work my lightest to my darkest. Now, what brush are you working with there? This is a number eight black velvet. Um, if you're looking for a watercolor brush, I really like this. That's a lot why I'm even friends. So silver brush and us are partners. Mm-hmm. But I like them before, you know, they even talk to me. So Yeah. <laughs> so see how I get this nice skin tone? Super easy. Actually, that was a brush that you got from their booth, the first NAMTA, before we were ever... No, she didn't give me a brush the first NAMTA. Was it? No, I bought it. Oh, is it? You bought that I one? I bought it. And then uh, Jeff and Dave from the Brush Guys gave me uh, the travel brush. Oh, yeah. That, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. So see, it's just a little quinacridone and a little ochre. And then I, a lot of water, and I'm just, see? Mm-hmm. If it's a little too pink, you just get a little more ochre in it. This is going to lighten a lot. Let me tell you, that burned me on my Moana. <laughs> I made so many mistakes with that collab. <laughs> so many! It's so light. <laughs> so many mistakes. Oh, she's light. Well, no, I mean that the oh, watercolor. Oh, was so light. No, no, watercolors are so light yeah. against the camera that it's like when I'm looking at it, it's it's just you know. But so okay, so here's thin. where the money is. So if you're painting with water, oh wow, it's well, blown well, see, out. Here, I think you have the cameras well, just really bad. On, I'm gonna sippy sippy. On this one, see, you can see here. Mm -hmm. It's much more in the in the range. But this one, yes, because you want to make any adjustments. Well, see, the issue here is that. We don't have, and this is one of the things we're going to talk about. Patty was like, what are you going to do in the new studio? Like, well, one of the things. I have this problem anymore. I see, yeah, right now, I see neither cinnamon or the canvas are very perfectly exposed. Because if I perfectly expose the canvas, right, then cinnamon is underexposed. And, and it starts looking dark. So, I did, and but depending on what canvas also we're working with, we have an issue where once with acrylics, 
the whites are so highly, you know, vibrant and white oh. compared to the darks, which are so dark, 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 that, you know, when she's working on a dark palette, we have issue seeing all the dark colors. And when she's working on a light palette, we have to adjust for the lighter colors. It's a whole thing. So in the new studio, we're going to try to control our lighting better, um, have individual lighting for the, for the uh, palette and for cinnamon. So I feel very fair. <laughs> I think of myself as very fair. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Well, you are very fair. I am very fair. I'm very fair. It's true. Over there. Take a little of my Thala turquoise. I'm just trying to talk about some freckles a little bit. Yeah. No, Jerry was asking, can you use watercolors and acrylics in the same painting? Yes. I could go over this with water uh, with acrylics very easily. So what I'm doing is I'm softening out the over splatter where it went where I wasn't like really into it. And yes, that will impact and add a little pigment, but I find it generally doesn't matter. And the whimsy of the freckles is super worth it. Gotcha. And normally this would be, they'd be less drippy and more spotty because you're working on a well, vertical surface. Well, it would surface. help a little. Another thing that's interesting, you can see where the paint's soft. Yeah. So in watercolor, you get hard, watercolor also plays hard lines and soft lines really well. Yeah. I'm going to take my Hansa and my quinacridone over here. This is going to give me this very bright color. The other thing I tend to not worry about in watercolor, and this is really just about your thinking in painting, mm -hmm. is if a color bleeds from one zone into another like it is right now. I don't really care. It's not my practice to have the type of painting where a drip or... Now, Holly was curious what color you used there for the skin tone. So the skin tone, this is my base fair girl. Uh, definitely if I'm doing oh, myself oh. is quinacridone and yellow ochre, and it's just oh. a very light wash, and I build it up. Can you point to that real quick so we can see what you're doing there? Quinacridone? Yeah. So if I have quinacridone and a little yellow ochre. And then, you know, if I need to, to, to add a blush or anything so I can go more quinacridone and come in and start talking about the nose. A little bit. Now again, I am. I can't be wet into wet like I would like to because I'm on a vertical. So I've got to be super careful. Might get a little more of pigment and and knowing that it will lighten, right? I know it will lighten, but beyond that, I can come here, take the water out of my brush, and come back and erase a little bit. See? Oh yeah. Blend it up in. Mm hmm You can enjoy that quite a lot. Just have a blast there. Super easy. And I don't have to worry about too much under here because this has to be toned anyways. Though I'm probably going to take this weird gray color I mixed earlier and tone a little bit under my eye. A little twiggy. Huh? Get a little twiggy. Is that twiggy? It, it wasn't she the famous lady in the 70s who had the under eye makeup? No, she was famous for skinny, sweetheart. But yeah, I thought she had, like, uh, She did the too. big lashes, too. Yeah, she, she had saying. some eye makeup thing going on, too. It was a whole thing. That mod thing was a whole thing. Yeah, she, there, was, there was a mod makeup scene there. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Although I do, that was kind of big eye girl too. I'm just gonna too. take some of my thalo turquoise and maybe have stronger perspective here. Let this bleed and think a little bit. I'm pulling some water just to soften this edge, so this line will soften. I have gouache and I have pens 
and have different things where I can just be a little more whimsical. I can just be a little more goofy. Here's, get here, there's my dots. Now in this particular case, I'm going to just very lightly, I'm going to give myself purple. Do I have purple eyebrows? No. Some but I days should. you do. Some days there's purple glitter in those eyebrows. But I feel like it's going to tie in with my hair. And I'm just being very light. See how this brush is a wash brush, it's a detail brush, it's a lot of different things. Oh, now here's a, here's a question. <laughs> What's gouache and how do you spell it? <laughs> gouache is, now I have acrylic gouache, which I haven't used before, but gouache is an opaque water-based media that's related to watercolor. has a slightly different carrier and you can do layers on top of it. Whereas watercolor, you do washes. Gouache, you can actually layer stuff. In a similar way that you can acrylic. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the cool things. Can you, can, you, can you mix gouache and watercolor? Yes. So now that, that leading to my question of, I've seen the neat thing where they use the gouache white with watercolor to great success. Kind of making use those wash. And, but that was when they were doing, what do you call those things? Uh scrolls and things like that's that. That's right. We're doing all the scrolls. They're using all sorts of neat things like that. It's true. Worked well. So I'm just trying to create a more whimsical feather. Mm -hmm. I want the color to be more interesting. By using different media, sometimes it helps me. We've talked about this in Big Art Quest before a little bit, haven't we? Mm -hmm. It lets me think about things if I need more exploration before I can determine if it's something that I want to do. So see how that, this is literally the process. How are we doing? I take some cues. Oh yeah. I'm going to let this rest for a so, second. So if you, if you just take a step forward, look, then I'll, then I'll zoom I'm out here. i soften her nose just a bit. See if I zoom so out. So I just went back here with a little water. Oh yeah. It's going to soften it. And I'll keep softening as it sits there. It's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, so I have a so like I said, I have to adjust the cameras kind of up and down yeah. based on whether I want to talk. Whoa! To, see if I was just for you and at all. Oh, I look great. Then, but then not as good. <laughs> great. <laughs> 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 so, so actually, y'all. I, well, I, I'm hoping this is helpful. Does anybody have any questions uh, yes, at this stage? Yes, lots. Everyone thinks that this is this is this is really good. I mean, uh, I'm hoping this is helpful because it's it's great that you guys come and watch me paint. I'm super grateful. And, I feel like a video is a success is when you take this information and you guys go paint. Then you guys go try. And then, right? you know, we'll, and, and we've got upcoming paintings coming up. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Do you guys see that? Do you see so, it? So that'll be that. When, when are we doing this one? Saturday. Saturday. Crap, I'll be on at 11. Do you guys see the ripple? <laughs> You're all excited about that. <laughs> I am. So I can make it bigger for you. That's my dream. <laughs> It's my dreams that you're. I, I, so I've been on this. I haven't won the lottery lately. Oh, yeah, real. so nice. Can you see it? Can they see it? Yeah, yeah, they can see it. They, what you, are they you, saying? Well, they, well, you have to give them a little, little moment here. So, There's peace a delay. was that. Give so, me immediate gratification. No, so, give it to him. Give it to him. Okay, give him so, big. Okay, you have to scoot over then because you're. Oh, I don't look good. You look great. So the so peace was asking here. Uh, are we at the end? Could we hold up the uh, what do you call it? Um, the painting there so that uh, everybody can see it. The uh, cabin painting? The, no, no, no. The um, the the one that you're working on right now. Yeah. So, see when I get over here on, let me get over on this camera. See if you step forward. See that one. You got a nice exposure there of that one. Yeah. So you know you, we can we can. We'll see. work this one through. We're here. Yeah. I'm showing you how it's done. I have committed. I've committed, yo. Margaret's like, I'm so pretty. I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you guys, again, I will give you the traceable. Mm -hmm. And you guys are certainly welcome to do this if this is the one that you want to do. And you're also welcome to be like, you know, I want to do my own thing. And I will not at all remotely be upset or offended or disturbed. So they are very excited about the cabin. That's the, 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 the broadcast delay is just coming up, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, it was moving. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> they thought that was pretty awesome. Because that was no small feat. So I've mixed my yellow and my red, and I'm going to come in here, and I'll pull this. I think this is going to be really red, but with the flower, I want it to have tonality. Mm -hmm. Again, 
Um, my mom and I went to France several times, and my job was photography. See. And I got to paint too, but like it was my job to like get up early and go out and deal with photography and figure out where the poppies were and all of that. I'm gonna come make a camera adjustment over there. And uh, so she really wanted to paint some poppies, and I thought it'd be really nice to paint some poppies. And we spent a huge amount of our second trip looking for poppy fields, which, by the way, are just um, uh, fields that have not been treated for weeds. <laughs> Stuff you don't know until you're in France, right? You just don't know until you find out. And um, I have such fond memories of finding these. And we were always there for, we were the wrong time for the lavender. Mm -hmm. Wrong time for lavender. Super disappointing. Wrong time. just putting in a first layer of first value and these will bleed together and that is okay because it'll be the sum of their parts that we deal with later that'll make them feel very poppy-ish I'm sure that's gonna have to be dark so I'm just taking my docks to create a darker value Isn't that nice mm-hmm or maybe it's necessary. Little docks. Mm -hmm. Purple. Um, and pigment is not the same in watercolor as it is in acrylic paint. It's not a one-to-one -one experience. Though there will be similarities and you will be informed about what your acrylic painting will be like from your watercolor painting. Yeah. And you can dry brush watercolor. People don't think about that. Not gonna. I like wet into wet, but mm -hmm. you can. You can absolutely do that. I just want to make these nice red poppies. I like poppies. So I just really got into photographing them and being out there and being in fields of poppies and finding anything with fields of poppies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really insults farmers if you like, do you have a poppy field? Because it's like accusing them of being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Things we needed to know before the trip. See how the paint glazes and layers on itself? This is a really wonderful nature of... Uh, any uh, watercolor mm -hmm. that you can totally lean into and enjoy. Adding some of these nice orange values. It will also continue to soften and that's another forgiving nature of this paint. And so you can just keep enjoying that as you go. I'm just adding a little dark red in here. Giving it some values. It needs some value. It's like it has no morals or something. <laughs> I yeah. love this little palette thingy. Well, are you, are you keep picking we it got up. this at NAMTA. <laughs> it was like, if, if you saw my channel way back in the day when we did other crazy things. The Krondosh booth, yeah. Yeah, dude, the Krondosh booth is like, I died and went to heaven. I can't even, like, I don't teach, like, these types of skills, so it's, like, super frustrating. Mm -hmm. Because I would love, I'm going to mix a little of my hand with my um, ochre and come over and do a first sort of coat on my amber. What do you think of that? First coats. First coats of amber. What's going on here? Is this nice gold? The trick with stones or gemstones or really anything is about catching those lights and darks. Uh, my friend Stephanie B does some really good. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, she does. She paints jewelry that looks real. Yeah. That's like that's her. And then you can make jewelry with the jewelry that you paint in. It's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty awesome. It's like here we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna like turtle this all the way down. You're gonna you're gonna draw Turn your jewelry. All the way down. You're gonna like draw it. your jewelry. You're gonna make your jewelry. You're gonna paint your jewelry. Then you're gonna turn it into jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> so you just gotta remember that amber has these colors. And how it's gonna really feel like amber is I'm gonna come back with probably some gouache or something and. See, isn't it crazy how quick it becomes amber? Mm hmm. Just trips me out. Amber's really about just tonality. And then when you hit it with a highlight, you're like, what? Where did it come from? And you're like, man, that stuff is so cool. Speaking of, I'm thinking about something I can put here that I feel like pretty good about so I'm going to take a little quinacridone. So, well, let me get, so you, you keep jumping around where your palette at so I'm trying to make ah, I'm I'm so sorry I'm not getting all the palette shots. So a little feather here. I forgot where they were. And some little layered feathers here. You see those? Yep. Let me see what I can do. And when How I put the yellow in the center see what happens? See if that helps. And that, I just love that. It's just insane to me. It's so cool. Coming and just giving a little. I love watercolor feathers. I do too. We could just have a whole watercolor feather class. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to zoom in while you're doing some just detail paint work like on 500 that. Five hundred watercolor Oop. feathers. Forget hundred layers. Five hundred watercolor feathers. There's so much fun to do. It's so fun. I get I get so caught up in trying to make sure that I get the uh, both of the 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 shot of the palette and the brush stroke. I get, I sometimes panic myself. I'm sorry, babe. No, it's and like I it's you know I do it to myself. There you go. I love when the pigment pushes the other pigment. All right, so we've got a nice little watercolor feather here. I think her neck could use a little shadow, so I'm gonna grab a little of this aqua. Trying to decide where I want to put it. I'm going to soften that a lot. Just want this to be cool and come under the face here with this. And a little of this aqua under the amber. This is what I love about... Um, Watercolor painting is how whimsical and everything everything can be. Mm -hmm. Super whimsical. Let's get a little quinacridone on a little yellow ochre because I forgot my ears. Oops. Hi, ears. Totally forgot you. I also need to get some blushing going on the cheeks. Oh. See, I'm just dashing that. Freckles are still there, so it's super authentic. Soften that edge there. Now, are you using... I'm so awesome. So, so let me scroll down. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to forget to do this. I'm sorry, guys. It's so much fun. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to... Are you using straight from the tube, or are you tending to, to mix these? I'm. Well, you can see here, I'm mixing and doing from the tube. Because remember, with watercolor, you're always, always, always painting um, a mix, because when you glaze, what's underneath shines through. Mm. Celebrate yourself sometimes, guys. I'm telling you what. Whenever you have the chance. Whenever you have the chance. Get a little brown in there. I'm going to add a little shadow right here. Just a little happiness, right? Guess where else we could have a little shadow? Mm. Maybe I'll take a little of my docks. 
Oh, that's a nice shadow. So it's my Thalo Turquoise in my docks, which is right there. Let's come underneath the nose. And you can cast a shadow out from the nose just a little bit. And I'll also come under the lips with this dark color. So do you think you'll do some more watercolor videos, streams? Oh, I don't, does everybody like these? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people are really enjoying this. I'm wondering if you'd do some more. You know, I hadn't thought of it. I, you know, there's a lot of good watercolor creators out there, so I just hadn't thought about it at all. But, you know, in your, in your process in design, you use watercolors because they're, they're a good thing. They're super, they're a really, okay, first of all, they're just a beautiful tool. The reason, this is, okay, you guys ready to hear something terrible? Hmm. Sounds like, no. But the reason I don't use uh, watercolors that often in my fine art is that I feel like on the resale market, um, sometimes watercolors are undervalued mm -hmm. um, for they're as much work as anything else. Yep. And sometimes in the buying market, I don't feel like. I think that, you know, because watercolors are also a widely accessible material. Well, and it's works on paper. You're always fighting the feelings of whatever feelings your collector base has about works on paper versus mm -hmm. works on canvas. And so, and you have such an overhead in framing because you really should frame your watercolors. I just store mine in a portfolio, but, you know. It's a thing. Yeah. I'm just now just enjoying laying down some color around the eye, which is always fun for me. Now, as you guys know, now the reason why you're, you're you're holding your palette just to keep it closer to the work surface, yeah. Yeah, just so it's near me. Yeah. This is just a really cool tool. This is like. And today we're not as focused on trying to show every. Mix no, I'm just trying to talk about like how I get here, right? Because like a lot of times I'm like, I'm trying to teach a thing. This one I want you to take away how I got to a thing. Is she not? Seriously, let's look at her for a second. Or my palette. All I can see is my paint. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> I was like, there you go. And see ya. Okay. So isn't, isn't this starting to be cheerful and sunny and I'm loving it. Yeah, I really, really like it. Everybody out here is having a really good time as well. They've really enjoyed this whole process and seeing how this is coming together. So this and, is... And, and please know, you can be really precision with watercolors. There's some amazing uh, Mind of Watercolor, mm -hmm. super precision artist. No, uh, really on point, man. Could really you paint... On point. Could you paint watercolor on canvas? Uh, Fredericks makes a watercolor canvas. Or mm -hmm. you can get absorbent ground by golden paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, following their instructions, prep a canvas. Mm -hmm. And I think, and this is off the top of my head, Ampersand has one. Mm. So there's some companies out there Scratchboard that Scratchboard maybe too. There's, there's, some, there's, a, there's, there's a few companies out there that make... Mm -hmm. You know, canvases prepared for watercolor or you can yeah. prepare your own yeah it's fantastic cool the options for artists now are amazing i i can still is everyone still got energy because i'm still going i'm like yeah. i want to finish her up. you're gonna wrap her up well that's totally yeah. cool okay cool and no i mean i just I just want to be able to you all it's... i'm gonna put out some paints gray i'm gonna use that initially for inside her eye though i'll probably come back with pen and markers and stuff to make her more whimsical like you do if you want to Mm. You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> when you're designing, when you're working out your stuff, there's really nothing you're beholden to except what pleases your heart. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to make sure that in my irises, you know, I'm going to have a little dark sort of outline. And I'm getting a smidge of, of soft water because I don't want these to be too dark. Right? Mm -hmm. With the eyes to still have this sort of light aspect to them. Like you do. 
because there's a certain fragileness that I like to preserve. And again, you can just, I'm telling you what, you can sit with a water, it's, you can overwork a watercolor, you can get in there too much, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You can, you can, you can. I love this little poppy. Just so easy, so happy. Poppy friend right there. Because she's got little poppies. Put a little yellow on my bee. I'm going to get a little gray on the wing. A little, little bee in the amber. You can kind of see it there. Not totally sure, but we think we see it. Super nice. Super nice. Super fun. Let's soften this out. Let's do some lips. Some lips. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to actually hit this with water first a little bit. Why are you doing that? Because I'm going to want to do like a, a little bleed here. I'm going to come at the center and let it bleed out. Oh, yeah, I did. And kind of let it be that. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. I'm coming back with a darker red. Like you do. Like you do. And then I'll come back with a dry brush and pick up my extra pigment. And it's as if the Whoa. lips paint themselves. I know, it's like a magic trick. It's so crazy, right? Oh, that was cool. A little yellow right here in the center. There she is. And she's wow. lovely. Just bang. Choo, choo, choo. Bang, 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 bang. Everybody thought that was cool. There was like all these, oh. Oh, it's the same time I did it, too. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Now, just to make things easy for myself, I'm going to get this oval. Uh -huh. This is actually, this oval wash is very similar to our cat's tongue. Because oil artists and watercolor artists have had these brushes for a long time. And you were like, darn it, I want one, too. Well, there are a lot of techniques and experiences that certain artists get to have. And it, it's it's tool not dependent, but highly yeah. preferential. Please don't feel like you have to have any tool to do this. I'm just going to tell you so you're not. It it it's sort of like you know having you know like if you're a if you build houses and you you have a framing hammer, if right. you're an armorer you have a planishing hammer. But those are two different hammers with two different jobs. But it's always good to have a hammer. I don't know exactly. why I made that analogy. I think I may have just gone completely off with that. I like it, though. Uh-oh. <laughs> Drip. It does. It wants to go down. Again, because that's because I'm vertical. And you would normally not be vertical on a piece like this, ever. No. You just wouldn't do it. You'd just be like, no, thank you. I'm just put, laying down some pigment so I have a sense of the color. I can always come back with acrylic, which is my stronger medium, right? Because we all, as artists, have mediums that we're stronger in. And, um, you know, even resolve it. But a lot of times here is where I can even determine if I, if I care enough about the story to even keep telling it. And also, see that bleed? No. That just makes my whole life just be so happy. Now, when you, when you were first, this is really interesting because there were a couple people who were saying they were concerned about the cost involved in getting into watercolors. 
Now, you've had success with some really inexpensive watercolors, though, just for when you're practicing yeah, getting into no, it. Yeah, no, man. I have a set, travel set of Cotman's. Their issue is that they um, are not as saturated. And it's the same issue with all paint. Uh, paint cost comes down based on pigment levels. What I'll say about watercolors, much more than even acrylics, mm -hmm. is the cost on them is in a sense lower because you have to replace, like, I'm never going to replace this brush. Unless I do something crazy, crazy to it. Like use it with your acrylics. Like use it with my acrylics. <laughs> which is, like, which Could is sort of... Could happen, but it probably won't. But that's sort of the defining factor of, like, why you know that watercolor brushes are, you know, they last longer than acrylic brushes. It's just like... So hopefully you guys are seeing an essence of me in here. Yeah. You know, this is... It is as acceptable... To paint, we're, I always like to say we're always doing self-portraiture as artists, right? We're always, always, always doing self-portraits in some sense. That's true because you're always like, it's a, it's a personal reflection of art. So you're making something as you see it, which is right. a reflection of you. Such an interesting thing that you can do with. Be all super esoteric about it. That's a very Hoovian hair swirl. Yeah. I'm telling the story that I want to tell. Hmm. Tell a story that I want to tell. Tell a story that I feel like telling. Give myself joy where I want to give joy. All right, so I'm pretty happy there. Now from here, I can do some fun stuff. If you have watercolor pencils, because you've drawn along with me for a while, or you've had some experiences or whatever, you can come in at this stage and... Color it up. Color it up over the wet, over the dry. Now these are the Arteza. Well, they're but the thing that's neat about them they're, is they're woodless. woodless watercolors. Yeah, that's what and like it's I'm, just all pigment. Now, oh my thing here though, that's, like you, so, you, say you, I have a pigment here I love. This is kind of cool. Hold on, let me show you how they do that. So I can go like this. That's the cool thing about these. And then where's my brush? My brush, my happy happy brush. <laughs> Because it's it's a stick of watercolor, which is kind of cool. It has slightly different properties. But exactly. It's like, hmm. Hmm. So you got sent a box of these, and we're checking them out. We're checking them out. They sent them. They sent these to us to check them out, and so we've been checking them out. Yeah. And you can do that. You can you can check things out. You can you can mix this media up. You can play with it. I like the bee being all soft there. Yeah. You can go right into water with these. Be very very playful. Now I was curious if you dip the t if you just dip it in water, does it become watery? Yep. Ooh, that's interesting. So, you know, I can be playful here and create a different energy in that space. That's neato. It is neato. I'm like, hmm. Like magic melting pencil. Yes, so, uh, so uh, uh, Michelle Ann was asking uh, uh, Mike Land, or, or gosh, gosh, it could be either way. Uh, are those uh, are those are woodless, yeah? Those are woodless. Highly pigmented. Highly pigmented woodless. Highly pigmented. So I can do that. I can not with my watercolor pencil. That would be terrible. 
terrible, terrible behavior. <laughs> with your watercolor brush? Yeah. I'm going to do this with a Monza. All right. So. Well, let's see what you're going to do there, Holm. You're just grabbing some white? Oh, yeah. Oh, the highlight, of course, yeah. These little touches, they're important. They can help bring something to life for you. They can add a much needed shine. Mm -hmm. Reflection to an object that needs one. As Luna runs around the house saying, shimmer and shine. I don't know the other parts because she always runs, it, it always fades off after that. I know there's some more of it. but. All right. Now, this, um, I'm going to wipe off now because I don't want this on here. But if I forgot to get it off, this this actually comes back clean with acetone. Really oh, easily. yeah, that's true. It was like magic when you clean that up. Now, I can sign. Oh, you're going to sign right down there, huh? It's there. Look at that. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh, if you, if you'll just step forward just a second, I'm gonna leave this framed right here for everyone, just for a second, so they can see that. That turned out really nice. Just a little. If you're thinking about something, you're trying to decide what kind of story you want to tell. What kind of. Now that you did that, you might be like, you know, that's not orange enough. I wanted an orange piece. It's too yellow. You might be like, I needed a lot more aqua. Yeah. Right, but you're not so far into it that you can't come back and and look. <laughs> so, one, you don't have to be like a historian when you're painting. That's something that we have to understand as artists. It is not our job anymore to record what is as accurately as is possible mm -hmm. while hiding political commentary. Not our job anymore. Boop. We can still take on that job if that speaks to us personally, but it's not our job. Now our job as artists is to speak to the truth of the human condition, which pretty much gives us open territory mm -hmm. as, as humans to do what we like and play how we like and talk how we like about these things. So in Selper Torture, which if you were in the Big Art Quest group on Facebook, gave you that challenge, Think about that project again, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I kind of challenge you to try it again, but maybe not as a historian, not trying to say, oh, this is how I see myself in the mirror. Right. Right. Um, think about it. Like if you're a famous uh, artist and you didn't paint that portrait, we would have no idea what you look like. A lot of times there wasn't a camera. I mean, it used to be a really important act of recording the world. But, but now we have cameras. So you paint, paint how you feel, right? Yeah. I, you can see how I feel about some things about myself. You can see what is important to me. You can see a little bit of how I see the world. In some sense, that's more accurate, right, than, you know, capturing everything. Mm. Capture everything. The stuff that matters. The stuff in here. Oh. This is the stuff, right? Yeah. And so, okay, any questions since oh, we're just having this relaxed day? Oh, that's right. Well, it was, it was, it's interesting. Uh, uh, Mike Land was, uh, was, was, a, was, uh, was, was asking about it, but yeah, uh, uh, I think Lindsay has also used these Arteza pencils and did a Dragonfly demo with them. So if you're Oh, dude, check out Lindsay's yeah. Dragonfly demo. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Check Lindsay that does out. a lot of demos. If ever you see uh, media and you want to know more about it, chances Don't are Lindsay there. has done yeah. a good... She's got like 1,400, 1,600... I, 1,200 videos, 2,000 well, videos. I don't even know anymore. It's like she, we, we used to quote how many videos that she had, but I was she, always she off too much, so. by like 100. And that's why I'd say like she has 1,200 videos. And she's like, no, there's 1,400 videos. But regardless, like, <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to know more about uh, Core Watercolors, if you want to know more about Daniel Smith Watercolors, if you want to know about – she's got some – if you're looking for an economy watercolor to get into that's quality, girl has done some reviews. Yeah, probably check her out there. Yeah. She's, she's got a lot of information. I do. That. Straight Wait, up. Uh, I do. If I need to know something, I will go by and be like, has Lindsay checked that out? And she probably has. And, and 
And you check it's out Stephanie helpful. B for her art on the um, the watercolor Deliberately jewelry. Deliberately creative yeah. with Stephanie. If you if if this part of the project was super fascinating to you, man, that is Miss Stephanie B. Mm-hmm. 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 And if watercolors are fascinating to you, Lindsay does a live watercolor every Friday. Yep. Or every other Friday. Yep. I don't know. If you guys are there all the time, we'll, you know. We'll you put some find. links in the iCard and stuff. We'll figure out how to do that. We'll, we'll figure it out. You can you can see it. And I hope to see some of this. We'll definitely throw up uh, some links and some no, traceables upcoming. and some stuff that's th- for you guys. That's, that's, when is this? This is coming up tomorrow? Saturday. 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 Tomorrow is a special release yeah. that you guys have been at. Well, some of you guys. Some of you guys, mostly the girls, have been enthusiastically asking for. It's not John Snow before you guys freak out. I, I, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to put Jon Snow on the, the calendar. It's more complicated than you think. It's political. But, because <laughs> a lot of other people have already painted Jon Snow, so I have to be super careful about how I proceed. Um, but it's something you girls have been asking for. And so that's going to come up tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right? It's on the calendar anyways. Now it is, because I said it. So Jon has to do it. Um, Saturday is myself, Angela Anderson, and my mom, and we're all going to paint Cabins on a Lake. Because you guys in the Angeluni group voted on that uh, forever ago. And so we're finally at the end of summer painting that. That's my cabin. And what's after that? 13 Days of Halloween starts yeah. October 1st. Get a pumpkin because at the on the Friday the 13th, we're mm. going to carve a pumpkin together. And, of course, there's that contest, that giveaway coming up, which you've got to be there for. You know, it's going to be on replay. But the first people will hear about it will be there for the live. Yeah. So. How was it? Good. Good. I This is weird. We won't do these all the time. We'll get back to more, like, directed projects. But I just thought you'd like to see this go from, I had an idea. I got some pictures. And I'm, I made a design that yeah. I could turn into an acrylic painting if I really loved it. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, like, th- this has been a very exciting. I was really enjoyed this. Have you, and, and, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of self-portraits. Please post them up and share them with us, right? Yeah. Yeah, we want to see all of that. Yeah. And, and the Big Art Quest group is a safe place to share it. And the website, safe place to share it. When I say safe, people are nice. Yes. That's all I mean. It's safe to share in the world. Like, no one's going to, like, jump you and be like, Arr, <laughs> arg, take you down. <laughs> no. But, you know, sometimes it's nice to have a place to share your artwork that doesn't require a bunch of opinions that you weren't in instigating. Mm-hmm. And so we have that on the website, and we have that here. I love the poppies. I love it, too. So for more information on and this, on anything else, you can check our website where we have a calendar of all the upcoming shows. We have chat we hang out. There's forums. You can upload and link things. It's just generally useful. Right. I'm trying to decide already if I would have done her differently. No, oh, just would you? You it's are good. always so. You are. Cinnamon's always like, I would do this different next time. Well, now I'm looking time. at her and I'm like, and I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to. Zig zig zig. Well, then I'm do like, it. You, okay, you thank just. You. you just. Oh, that's what it was. Is you wanted to. You wanted permission to be able to go back in and continue to, to fiddle. So there was this. There's this part right here where I'm like feeling it, and I just need to. Uh... YouTube called and said you. We got to. We got to turn it off. It did. No. I'm just teasing. Oh my god! <laughs> that would be awesome. I have a secret red phone that only YouTube calls backstage. And we I just wanted to create a more balanced shadow around. See, just a little bit more balanced around the eyes. I was going to have that. Actually, that is. I just wanted to. That that just feels very nice. All right. Notice how I didn't. I can do eyelashes. I just didn't because I didn't think it would add. It. Look at me. <laughs> so obviously caught on my own outfit and didn't think it would add yeah. I don't like and, this so, piece, and, and so for those of you who are your first time show you should know that you should stay past the first ending and the second ending and the third and the fourth and at we'll least be back to our quick and uh, tomorrow's video lesson is short is it short we hope no wait, we know what it is I, it's, I don't want to say okay. I want them to be surprised. They'll be surprised then tomorrow. So will I, because I don't apparently remember what it is. It's not live. It's a VOD. Okay, well, then we go. I See, I should know that then. All right, I'm a little afraid. On the afraid. calendar. Okay. We'll just, all right, we'll do this thing. All right, I know what it is. I remember now. <laughs> be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And be creative. Be, be inspired. I'll see you with the easel really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>